God has an encouraging word for you and me today through the Bible-based preaching of Dr. Don Wilton and a message about reaching out and praying for a miracle. You can do it. We've been uh, studying such an amazing subject, praying for a miracle. And I told you on our last occasion that I was going to try to really unpack one of the most critical subjects I believe that any of us could ever deal with. But we're in John chapter 2, and uh, we're taking a very serious look at what it means to pray for a miracle. So I want you to listen up here, because you, like me, and like so many others, are asking God to do something for us that only God can do. And here at Cana of Galilee, in this magnificent little village that kind of overlooked the Sea of Galilee, that's still there today, excepting it's a lot bigger than the village it was during Jesus' time. Something extraordinary took place there. And we find the Lord Jesus and His mother, and we find a whole group of people at a wedding. You can just imagine the band playing and the music and all the joy and this great event at which this man and this woman are about to be joined together as husband and wife. And uh, it's really a very happy, good occasion, but there's a bunch of people there, and something catastrophic happens. They run out of wine, and there's nothing they can do about it. Let's read this together. Okay, John chapter 2. You need your Bibles? John chapter 2. I want to read this to you. On the third day... There was a wedding at Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus also was invited to the wedding with his disciples. When the wine ran out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. Jesus said to a woman, What does this have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. I know I haven't preached on that very important statement, but just stick with me for a minute, okay? His mother said to the servants, whatever Jesus tells you to do it, do it. Let's run that by again as we read the script. Whatever Jesus tells you to do, do it. Now there were six stone water jars there for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the feast. That's a nice, how do you do? (laughs) You know, sorry, I've just got to say this. I can just imagine these servants trembling in their boots. I mean, they're about to insult the very man who hires them. I think they must have been saying, whoa, wait a minute. We're going to take this master of the feast and we're going to hand him a cup of water and he's going to fire us on the spot. Little did they know. One thing they did do is they just did what Jesus said. All right, let's pick up here. Now draw some out, take it to the master. So they took it. When the master of the feast tasted the water, now become wine, and did not know where it came from, even though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the master of the feast called the bridegroom, and he said to him, Everyone I know serves the good wine first. And when people have drunk freely, then they serve the poor wine, because they won't notice it nearly as much. This is the first of his signs Jesus did at Cana of Galilee, manifested his glory, and his disciples believed in him. Friend, listen. God is very clear about something. We can do a lot of things for ourselves, but we cannot perform our own miracles for the things that only God can do. You can take water in any form or fashion and apply anything you want to it. You'll never turn it into wine. Only Jesus could do that. This was a miracle. It was impossible. And last week, I made two important statements. Number one, that miracles are those things that only God can do. And number two, miracles have many purposes. I think it's very important in the light of what Jesus is teaching us here in His Word to understand that God does what God does with a divine purpose in mind. There's a reason why He will grant to you a 
a, a miracle. And I just, I listed four or five of them. Demonstrates God's power, glorifies God's name. Miracles illustrate man's dependence on God. What do they do? They strengthen our faith. They bear witness to the world around us. I just, I, this has nothing to do with the price of eggs right now, but I'm going to ask you, if God has done something for you, miraculous, is that bearing witness through your life right now to the world around? And furthermore, miracles bless those who receive them. So here's the point today, and I want you to really get this, because I'm going to try and harness this together. I think in light of what took place here at Cain of Galilee, that there are seven elements to miracles. Let me just run these by. Seven elements that make up a miracle. Let me use an illustration. When you bake a cake which we all love. Now, I love plain chocolate cake. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm one of those people, if it's going to be a chocolate cake, it needs to be, you got it, chocolate. You know, it's like coffee. I have a very good friend who works with me by the name of Michelle. And we've been together a long time. She and I have this thing because we know what real coffee is. Coffee has to be coffee, as far as I'm concerned. And good beans are the ingredients that go into good coffee, and I'd like the right ingredients in my cup of coffee so that it's strong and I can enjoy it, and everybody around me can smell it at the same time. There are elements that go into this one thing called a miracle. So I'm going to tell you something. Your miracle will never be a miracle unless these elements are present. Here they are, element number one, presence. Jesus has to be involved 100%. Take Jesus out of it, no miracle. Presence. Number two, predicament. These people had a predicament. They ran out of wine. And the predicament, furthermore, was exacerbated by the fact that you cannot turn water into wine. That's a predicament. I have a very good friend, as I speak to you, that's suffering terribly with heart disease. One of the most precious men I've ever met in my entire life. The doctors have told him without a new heart, he's not going to be able to survive. He needs a miracle. And we're praying for him. It's got a predicament. Listen, a broken marriage is a predicament. Hurting children are predicaments. No money, the means that is taken away from us in order to provide for our families, that's a predicament. Not having a job is a predicament. Getting that bad news from the doctor, it's a predicament. I don't know what your predicament is, but can I say this to you with all of my heart? Jesus deals with predicaments if he's present. Take your predicament and give it to the one who's present. Element number three, purpose. Before you pray and ask for a miracle, understand God's divine purpose. And we've shared that. I encourage you, call, get the previous message because I spent a, a lot more time dealing just with the purpose of miracles. Praying for a miracle. What's God's purpose? And purpose is the third element. The fourth element is parameter. What's a parameter? A parameter is a sense of direction. It's a boundary. It's modus operandus. It's instructions. Jesus was very clear and led by his own mother who went to these servants and said, listen, whatever 
He says to you, do it. Why? Because Jesus is going to establish the parameter. Now, here at the wedding feast, it was pretty clear, wasn't it? Go and get those water jars over there that are ceremonial water jars, and that's another whole series here that they used for purification according to the ritual of the Jewish people in that time. Go and get those water jars there and fill them up with water right up to the top, up to the brim. Listen, this was very specific. The parameters were clear. Get the jar, pick it up, fill it up with water, and don't do a half-hearted job all the way to the top. Now, once you've done that, dip in there and take it, that very same water that I've just told you to fill in those jars and give it to the master of ceremonies. Folks, parameter, 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 parameter. Now, how many times do you and I say, Lord, I know that you're present. I know that I have this predicament and I desperately need you. I know that you've got a divine purpose in mind for what I'm going through, but I want you to know that I'm willing to do everything you tell me to do excepting Have you found yourself like drawing a line? You said, Lord, I, I <laughs> can you imagine if these servants had said, you know what, we'll do everything you want us to do, but we're not going to use those special jars over there. The rabbi's going to kill us. Could we not go outside and get some other water pots? Jesus said, no, use those. You know, maybe they would have said, you know, we'll do all of these things, but if you don't mind, if it's okay with you, we, we don't want to fill it up to the brim. By the way, what does it mean to fill something to the brim? It means almost like teetering on the top that if you even so much as give it a slight little wobble, the water's going to come spilling over the edge. I don't know. They might have looked at one another and said, oh, listen, Jesus doesn't know anything about water pots. He doesn't know how hard it is to carry these things. We can only carry them if they're three quarters full. So why don't we put water in and only do it three? He's not going to worry. Who cares about whether it's at the brim or three quarters? Jesus doesn't mess with us. I don't always understand, but I know that I must follow. Now, what are these elements here? Presence of Jesus? Predicament? What is your circumstance? What are you facing? Purpose? Why would Jesus do a miracle in your life? To what end? What parameters do you suppose he might lay before you? And does it really matter in terms of your willingness to do it? The fifth element is practice. <laughs> you know what practice is? Let's do it. They went and did it. You know, I've looked at this passage here like you have. I don't find any hesitation. It's not recorded for us. I don't even find a, a whisper well, we don't know that. We don't have the privilege of that. But evidently, they heard what Jesus' mother said, and they went and did it, down to the absolute T. They did it, practice. And then here's the sixth element, power. It's the demonstrated power of God. It's the happening. I mean, it happened. <laughs> the water turned into wine. Did you get that? This person went back to the doctor. Listen, I, I heard recently of one of our people who was diagnosed with cancer very seriously. I can't explain this to you, but everybody was praying and they went back to the doctor and, and they left the doctor's office and all the things that were going on. The doctor said, well, we can't quite fully understand it, but it's gone. Power. How does God work? He works in mysterious ways. 
How is it possible that that marriage could have been reconciled? You know that daughter that left home? It's got out there in the faraway fields. Hasn't come home in a long time. Doesn't ever call. And all of a sudden, God intervenes and she turns around. She comes back home again. Remember the prodigal son? Came up out of that pig pen turned around, went back to his father's house to receive a tumultuous welcome. This is a picture of our heavenly father, the power of God demonstrated. And the seventh element is the possibilities, the endless possibilities of what is produced when we pray for a miracle and God does for us what he does for us. So what is this all about then, my friends? I, I, I want to bring this together by perhaps suggesting seven steps to your miracle. Now, I'm going to switch gears here. I'm going to be very practical. Maybe you want to write these things down. Maybe take note. Maybe if you've got your computer with you, or your iPhone, go there to your notepad. You've got a hard copy of the Word of God like I have. Get a pen and a paper. Write these down. Write it in the annal of your heart. I really believe God has given this to me to say to you that it's very simple, but it's based upon what God is telling us. This extraordinary miracle right here at Cain of Galilee, I'm passionate about this because you need a miracle and God will do this and only He can do it if He chooses to do that because He's God, He's sovereign and He loves you and He loves me. Jesus came to this world for you and for me, he looked out over the crowds and he wept for us. He had me running down his cheek in a tear because he cares about me and he cares about you. Praying for a miracle, here's seven steps to your miracle. Number one, identify what's going on. Identify it. What is it? You ready to write that down? Say, oh, pastor, I, I know that. Do you? Identify what it is. Say it. Write it. Get ready to tell God about it. Number two, write it down. You might say to me, oh, come on, you're sounding like a school teacher. Well, I am really. <laughs> write it down. My wife will tell you how many times, it doesn't matter where I am, I'll Something will pop into my mind. I quickly grab my notepad or whatever it might be and I just write something down. Uh, you say, well, because Dr. Wilton, you're just getting old. That's all. Well, there's some truth in that. Yeah, I understand that. You know, sometimes we have great ideas and thoughts, but as long as they float around, sometimes the wind gets them and they float away. Write it down. Number three. Form partnerships. Are you listening? Form partnerships. Get together with people that matter. Prayer warriors, mothers, fathers, life group leaders, teachers, neighbors, best friends. But get this, these are people who love the Lord, who understand the power of prayer, that have demonstrated a level of spiritual leadership in your life. Don't sow your seeds on rocky ground where there are weeds. Be careful who you talk to. Be careful who you share with. This is urgent business. Get together. Form partnerships. Start a prayer movement centered around what God is telling you to do based upon the predicament of your own life, which leads to number four, pray. Prayer is powerful, isn't it? Get on your face before God. Mark out systematic times of prayer, morning, lunchtime, evening. Perhaps start a fast. The Bible is filled with fasting. Prayer and fasting. God answers prayer. Do away with something. Stop doing something. 
pick on a meal, period of time, seven days, 40 days like Jesus. Pray, fast, read the scriptures, get people, get serious about what you need, your miracle. I think when Jesus' mother looked at these servants, I'm not trying to read words into the text. She was saying to them, servants, get serious right now. You don't need to be back there just talking about the ball game. There's a time and a place for everything. But get serious about praying for a miracle. This is serious business because you're in a predicament. And Jesus is present in your life. Do it. Pray fast. Number five, follow instructions. You may not have had the first. But just follow instructions. What are the parameters? What is he telling you? Do it. Maybe we're even talking about it. These are instructions identifying what it is. These people knew they'd run out of wine. Write it down. They spoke it. They didn't have computers and iPads. Probably I'm not. They didn't have pens and ink like we do. Form partnerships. Jesus' mother said, come on together, servants, let's do this. Pray. Follow the instructions. Number six, anticipate. Just expect. <laughs> you know, that brings that wonderful word, faith, into focus, doesn't it? You know, the Bible tells us even spiritual leaders in the church need to be men and women of faith and bold in faith. And faith means that the last question we ever need to ask is, can we or do we have enough money to do this or are we willing? We need the first question we need to say is I will do this because God is telling me and because I believe and I know, I anticipate this. I expect it. I'm asking God. I'm crying out to Him. I don't even know how to say this properly but the earnestness with which you seek God matters. Right throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament, you find people, even in sackcloth and ashes, pouring out their hearts before God. And God hears us and answers our prayer. He always does that. And number seven, respond. Just respond. You're responding right now. How? Number one, give your life to Jesus. That's how you respond. Number two, recommit your life to Jesus. Respond. Number three, pray for your miracle. Now, do it. Watch what God does. Join me as we pray together. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I pray for a miracle. For this person, this man, this lady, this boy, this girl, this senior adult, someone in a hospital right now, Someone whose marriage is in tatters and ruins. Someone today who's crying out, who's at the end of it. Someone who wants to give up. Someone who's contemplating taking their own life. Lord, intervene. Turn their water into wine. Lord Jesus, you are God in all the earth. Thank you that we can pray for a miracle. And thank you that you alone are God. In Jesus' name we pray together. Amen. That miracle, that whatever it is, is available by the power of God. Let us pray you through that next step. But you know, the very first step you have to make is saying yes to Jesus. Have you done that? It's about what's going on in your heart, but you could repeat this simple prayer. Lord God, I realize I've messed up. We've all messed up. But today, I give my life to you, Jesus. I believe you died on the cross for me, and I ask you to save me from my sin. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Just know we're here for you. After the Encouraging Word broadcast is over, there's still a wonderful place to connect 24 hours a day. It's the encouragingword.org. You can visit our message archives, download Dr. Wilton's sermons, or sign up for our weekly podcast. 
A favorite button on our website is the prayer request button where you can share a prayer request or personal need. Maybe you have a praise report or a testimony. Let us know so we can rejoice with you as well. You can also sign up for our daily Bible guide and have devotions sent to your email every single day. Now, if you have a question about your salvation, perhaps questions about how to share your faith with a friend, let us walk you through the steps to a personal relationship with Jesus and the ability to share that with others. If you're looking for a book from Dr. Wilton or maybe a CD or DVD, we have resources ready to send to you at the click of a button. No matter what the reason, we hope you'll connect with us today online at theencouragingword.org. What a wonderful time of worship we've had together. You know, I want you every day to experience this encouraging word. It's about Jesus. That's why I want you to get your own copy of the Daily Encouraging Word Bible Guide. This wonderful devotional, has been prepared and I want to give it to you free of charge. All you need to do is call that number, send us an email, write to us. Just let us know. We're going to send this to you. We send thousands upon thousands of these across the nation and around the world. Every day, you're going to be able to read God's Word. You're going to be able to speak to the Lord Jesus. And I'm telling you, with God's Word in your heart, ah, I'm telling you, you are fortified for the journey of life. The Daily Encouraging Bible Guide. It's yours for the asking. Call us right now. We'll send it to you. Our time is gone, but the number on your screen and the website will connect you with us 24 hours a day. We would love to be encouragers for you. Hello, my friends. Thank you for watching The Encouraging Word on YouTube. If you were blessed by this message, would you like it, comment, and perhaps would you subscribe and get connected with us? In fact, if you want to discover more about the encouraging word, visit our website at tewonline.org. God bless you today.